This is my version of the Arnolfini portrait by Jan van Eyck. When I first saw van Eyck's version, I presume that the woman in the image is pregnant. This is actually a common mistake to make. The original was painted in 1434 and it was the fashion of the time to wear dresses like this and women would hold their clothing in this manner. I'm mentioning this solely because we, when we're looking at a painting, we view it through a contemporary lens. We recognize it's an old painting, but we view it through a modern perspective. We struggle to view images in their original context and time period. In some ways, this is unavoidable because we live in the modern world. But it's important to be aware of the mistakes that you could make when analyzing a piece of work. Researching a painting will assist you in understanding the symbols that are present. This is a picture of a marriage and you would expect the couple to be the main focus, yet neither of them is placed on the central line. If we look at the central line, there are some key areas of interest. Sometimes we might presume something is unimportant because we don't know the symbols that are, are present in the image. I love Van Eyck's version. It is full of symbols and mysteries that are immediately understood by just doing an analysis of the composition. Every time period has its own visual language. These are a series of Im images and symbols that we understand because we have a shared culture. There is a symbol in this painting that is still part of our visual language. We would understand that the dog is a symbol of faithfulness. This dog is placed on the central line, but it isn't the most important aspect of the painting. When you look at this painting from a distance, it is the chandelier and the mirror that holds the composition of the painting together. The chandelier creates a point of visual interest and it is such a show of Van Eyck's skill and ability that it encourages you to look at the artwork more closely. When you look closer, you'll notice the writing. When translated into English, it says, Van Eyck was here, 1434. He has placed his signature on the central line. Below is a circular mirror, and this is the most fascinating part of the painting. Within that mirror is the reflection of the couple and also two other people. At this time, it wasn't necessary to have a priest at the wedding, but it was necessary to have two witnesses. It has been suggested that the painting is a kind of legal document to prove their marital status. Through the use of a mirror, Van Eyck has managed to place the couple on the other two vertical lines while also placing their reflection on the central line. Everything that is of importance is placed on the central line through the use of this mirror. This is an incredibly sophisticated composition. Around the mirror, there are 10 images that depict some of the Stations of the Cross. These images tell the story of Christ on the day of the crucifixion. When I place the diamond guide above this image, you'll notice that the main point of convergence occurs just above the mirror. The image closest to this point is a depiction of Christ on the cross. This painting is a Christian marriage so it's easy to see why this would be a significant part of the image.
Obviously, Van Eyck didn't use the Diamond Guide, but this is one of the compositions that I considered when I created it. I've looked at many different artworks over the years, and the Diamond Guide originated from those observations. It is a useful tool for analysing artwork and creating artwork. I'm going to fold a piece of paper in order to find the Diamond Guide. I want to do this to give you a visual demonstration. It will be a new way to help you remember how to draw the guide. If I fold it in half, it creates the central line of the diamond guide. I can fold it again to create the horizontal line. I can now fold each side to create the other vertical lines. Most of the diamond guide has been created by folding the paper, but now I must use a pen. I'm going to draw over the creases so you can see the guide more clearly. Here are the lines that we have so far. I can place a cross in the top box of the sheet of paper. Then I can place a cross in the bottom. I can then draw a line from the centre of the top cross to the top right edge of the piece of paper. I can then draw another line from the centre of the cross to the top left of the piece of paper. Then I draw a line from the centre of the bottom cross to the bottom right edge of the paper. And then I draw a line from the centre of the bottom cross to the bottom left edge of the paper. That completes our diamond guide. One of the strengths of the diamond guide is its ability to adapt to any portrait sized canvas. The paper or canvas doesn't need to have specific dimensions. If it's in portrait format, the diamond guide will adapt to its shape. I've created a number of pieces using this composition tool and I know it will improve the composition of any images that you create.